In today's video, we explore some of the coal mining history of Hosmer, British Columbia, Canada. The settlement was established in 1906 by the Canadian Pacific Railway. The town was a main link in a long line of coal mining communities through the pass, from Alberta into British Columbia. The CPR set up the Pacific Coal Company to run the mining operation in Hosmer through a company called Hosmer Mines Limited. By 1908, under construction was a coal mining site at Hosmer that was to supply coke to the smelter in Trail, BC. Construction of the town site was underway by 1910 and reached a population of around 1,200 or more by 1913. In 1914, the mine was closed. The mine was not able to supply demand and difficulties in costs of extracting high quality coal were to blame. This is by far my biggest explorer to date, where I will explore three locations in this area. We will first start at the abandoned ruins of the power house and boiler house, then travel a short distance away to the remains of a row of coke ovens. Lastly, we will try and find the location of the hidden and mostly forgotten Hosmer Cemetery. So sit back and relax as we explore some of Hosmer's coal mining past. Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. Today I'm in Hosmer, BC, and I'm looking around the area for some old mine ruins. So uh, there's a few buildings around, uh, some coke ovens, and I'm gonna try to find the uh, cemetery. Uh, apparently that one's a little bit hard to find. It's a little bit hidden, but uh, yeah, we'll see what we can find. And the first thing I found is this old structure here. Pretty big structure. So I believe this is the old powerhouse for the mine operation. So the mining activity all through here through Crow's Nest Pass, through this valley into BC. It's all coal mining. So everything we see or find, it's all got to do with the coal mining past here. It's pretty cool and interesting. I like this old history. There's a tunnel here. Looks like it goes the whole length of the powerhouse. Okay, let's go have a look here. Just have to be careful where we step. There's a bit of debris on the ground here. So yeah, this runs the whole length of the building, it looks like. Luckily I brought my flashlight. I didn't think I was going to need that today. <laughs> A little bit of graffiti. Of course, you see that everywhere. Here we are just at the end of the tunnel. Looking up to the upper floor. And we're going to go up there in a minute or so and yeah a little bit more graffiti okay we'll just walk back out not sure exactly what this tunnel down here would have been used for there's just some grading that they have placed I think there's quite a few people that come here and visit this site and you can go up 
the upper level, which we're going to. It looks like a bucket line or something like that. Once again, I don't know a lot about mining equipment. So I'll make my best guess. Okay, here's the upper level. Pretty cool looking structure. There's really nothing left. It's just a shell of the buildings. But it just looks really cool. They built these walls and the structure really strong. <laughs> this is standing all this many years later. And the mine shut down in 1914. So these structures have been abandoned since 1914. And the main structure itself is still standing, so that's Pretty impressive. So that's where I was looking up through earlier from down below. And that's where the tunnel tunnel runs through the center of the building. So we'll go over here. There is another building over here. I believe this is the boiler house or a compressor house I've heard. Not totally sure, but Again, the main structure is left. Still looks actually in relatively good condition for how old that is. That was built really well. Have a quick look over here. I think we can get a little bit of a closer look. So yeah, here we are down inside. So Hosmer supplied coke to uh, Trail BC. They had a smelter there. The Canadian Pacific Railway had a smelter there. So that's what they were supplying. And coke is basically just coal that's superheated in these ovens. with little to no oxygen. It takes all the impurities out. It turns into a really porous, good burning fuel. It's called Coke. Here's a look at the outside of this compressor building or boiler building, not sure. Yeah, very cool. Built the structure very sturdy. 
still standing like that. So here's one last look. Before we leave this area, we're gonna go try to find some other areas. I'm gonna go show you guys the Coke ovens that are just down the road that I was just telling you about where they superheated the coal, turn it into Coke and sent it on down the road, not too far to Trail BC to the smelter. And we're gonna go try to find a cemetery also. So yeah, let's carry on. Hey everyone, I'm just down the road from the other ruins and these are the coke ovens and they are called beehive coke ovens. So these look pretty cool. There used to be 240 of these and I think left there's only 40 some. So there's this side and then on the other side so they're back to back. There's a row here of them. So what they did is they took coal, put it in the top of these ovens, and inside would be an oxygen poor environment. And they would superheat it, and it would take out the impurities and the gases out of the coal and create coke, which is like a porous type substance that I think burns better and burns at a higher heat. So yeah, they turned coal into what's called coke in these. And then they would send this down the line to Trail BC where they had a smelter. So yeah, Canadian Pacific Railway is what needed all that coke and it all went to the smelter down there. So it's pretty cool. So these three or so here on the end are pretty complete looking. They still have the facing on them. So that's what they actually would have looked like. And here is where you can actually see the inside part of it, which is the beehive looking part. So, it's pretty cool. So here's another section down here. You can't really see it too well, because everything is overgrown here. But here's another section. And this, and this runs down here. And yeah, you can't see too much left of these anymore. These ones are really overgrown. But you can see the hill or the mound where they were. And you can see the little openings still. I don't know if you guys can see that on the camera, but. So we'll go around the end here and I'll just show you the front side. Pretty much looks the same as the back side that I just showed you. So 
So yeah, now we're on the other side. So down on this end, yeah, you can see the more complete ovens again. So yeah, it's almost like a mirror on the back side. Same amount of ovens, looks the same. Yeah, it's crazy that there used to be 240 of these here. Pretty cool. Pretty cool sight. So I'll give you guys a little look on the inside here. See at the top there, so that's where they would have loaded the coal in the top and sealed it up and superheated that coal, turned it into coke. Pretty cool. So, yeah, we can even get closer in this one. Front is open. made out of brick. These are taking quite a while to build. Pretty impressive. So yeah, that'll be about it here, guys. So I'm gonna go on down the road. And I'm gonna go and try to find that cemetery. Might be a hard one to find, but we'll go have a look, see what we can find. Hey everyone, I'm on a trail that I think goes to the cemetery. I hope, I'm not sure yet. I'm just down from the ruins a little ways. It took me a little bit to find this, or at least, like I say, I hope this is it. I don't know. Ah, yes, it is, finally. Okay, let's have a look here. Some tombstones. So this is the old Hosmer Cemetery. 
born 1904, died 1912. Just a kid. Nineteen twelve. Also not very old. There's a couple in here. Died nineteen eleven. Aged eight weeks. Another baby. here underneath this tree. Oh. Born 1912, died 1912. Another child. Here's one. Wow. 1909 to 1916. Another child. There's probably a lot hidden in here that you can't see if they're not next to the path, but We'll see what we can find. There's still a little trail that goes over here. Oh yeah, here we go. Here's what I was looking for. So here's the grave site of Fred Alderson. This is the main one I was looking for here because I've heard of him. He's pretty famous. He's known as the Hosmer Hero. So on December 9th, 1910, there was an explosion in the Bellevue mine over in the Crow's Nest Pass, which is not too far from here. And he went on a rescue attempt and he didn't end up surviving along with 31 other miners. So he's a hero because he went in to save these miners and gave his life. And this is where he's buried. So at the time, his heroism was reported provincially, nationally, and even internationally, including in his native England. So that's where he was from. So yeah, he's quite the hero to give your life to try to save other miners and not end up making it out yourself. Okay, here's another grave site. Yeah, it died 1910. Not a child, but still young. 32 years old. Let's just have a quick look down here. Yeah, here's a site, an old metal fence around it. Here's another one. I think this is one, but it's not much left, unfortunately, on that one. I 
think that's pretty much it as far as I can see. I mean, there's probably more in here, but they're really hard to find. Okay, so we're just walking into the cemetery now and we're gonna head on down the road. So I hope you like this exploration of Hosmer, BC, really interesting place. I covered the three areas that I wanted to. It took me longer to find some of this stuff than I anticipated. If you like this video, once again, don't forget to click the like and subscribe to my channel. I have a lot more adventures coming up, some really good ones. And yeah, click that notification bell icon too. That'll just remind you when a new video of mine comes out. So, so until the next one, guys, see you later.